Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome to the Retro Future. Massive thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is the go-to site for all things PCB. They are full-feature PCB suppliers and offer all kinds of PCBs ranging from standard PCBs to advanced PCBs, double-sided PCB assembly services, layout services and more. They're now also offering 3D printing, CNC machining and injection molding. PCBs start from $5 for 10 pieces and new members get their first order free. I have found another weird Nintendo retro related item. This right here looks like like the NES Classic Mini. However, it is not. It is all a massive lie. Much like this here, Nintendo DS. It looks like a Nintendo DS. It presses buttons like a Nintendo DS. But what's that on the screen? Oh, it's made out of paper. That is because this is a non-working store example of a DS. So it has weights in it. I've actually made a video on this. Um, it has weights in it to make it feel like it's a real Nintendo DS but it's actually not. It's all a massive lie. I've also got this one. This is a Game Boy Advance SP, which looks pretty convincing. However, the cartridge is screwed in and the screen's made out of paper. Again, a massive lie. And I've also got a Nintendo Switch Lite, which looks like it's a real Nintendo Switch Lite, but it's not. It's got a paper screen and on the back, it says Exemplier Factice, which means non-working in French. Wow, but what all of these have in common is that I own them and now I own this one too. This is the NES Classic Mini and the only thing that makes it look different to your one is this here little sticker. Without any further ado, let's take a look at it. So the really cool thing about this is it actually has the HDMI port on the back, the micro USB because Nintendo are a little bit behind the curve. It has two controller ports and it has the reset button, which is a little clicky one, and it has the power one, which is a little poppy outy one. It doesn't lift up, but that's fine. It never did that anyway because Nintendo are lazy. It's got the vents on the top. It has everything. It literally has everything. And it also has this sticker. Now, what does this sticker say? I hear you scream. Not working. Exemplaire factice. Wait, not representative of final product. And then it says all of that again in another language. Poids non representative de la version finale. Dash quitch <laughs> Oh, I better not do that one. So yeah, interestingly, this has no weight to it at all. But the thing is, I don't believe the actual NES Classic Mini had a lot of weight to it anyway, because there was no battery inside it and it was a very small little PCB. But we're gonna open it up anyway. The other thing I have, which you will not believe, is the controller. I've even got the controller and it's in the bag with the little cable tie on it because it's never been used before. And again, on the back of this, it has the same sticker, just much smaller, and it says non-working, weight not representative of final product. It of course also has the screws, which is really cool. And it has all of the, uh, the injection molded details that you would see on the regular NES Mini. So I'm really excited to open these things up and find out what's inside them. Um, that's what we do on this channel. Uh, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing and leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it. Let's take these things apart and see what's inside it. Because the weird thing is, what can they not include with this controller? Like it's got the buttons, it's got the start and select, it's got the D-pad, it's got the L and R, oh wait, it's not a SNES. So let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. And if there's anything inside, we're gonna try it out. Um, I don't actually think I have any ability to play this though. Um, and I doubt very much this is gonna work, but we'll open it up and see if there's a motherboard inside here. There must be, because it's, doing things it's got a button it's got controllers i don't i don't understand we're gonna find out let's start with the controller there is six phillips screws let's go ahead and take this thing apart oh it's on the other side okay well that's exactly what i thought was going to be in there and i just don't see how this wouldn't work if you were to actually plug it in to an NES Classic Mini. Look, it's got, oh look, no, there is actually meant to be a chip there and there isn't a chip on this board. You can see that there, it's got the unpopulated contacts. It looks like there might have actually been, I don't know if there would have been some little resistors there or if those are test points for the buttons. I'm not sure. Weird though, look at that. That is absolutely bizarre. There's nothing on the silk screen to say that this is a, a development model or anything. So likely what this is, is it's just 
an unpopulated PCB that they took off of the, uh, the, the production line and just whacked it in here, put a sticker on the back and called it example model. One really cool thing about this mess of things up here is that this is actually a fail safe method to stop people from yanking the cable out and breaking the controller. So you'll see here it winds around in quite a little snaky way which means that there's absolutely no way of damaging and putting any tension on this cable right here which I find quite interesting. You might not agree but leave a like if you did. Well, that's it for the controller and that is it back together. Now let's figure out how to take this thing apart. So I reckon underneath these little feet are going to be some screws. Yes, hello, screw, but I don't think my screwdriver is long enough. Damn it. And that's the final screw. Right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. What is inside here? I'm very nervous. Let's, uh, let's do it like this and let's lift this off. Here we go. Oh! Look at that, there is literally a motherboard in here. That is insane. And there's the, the top, there's absolutely nothing there at all. So where it says on the bottom, weight is not representative of the final product, that's pretty much gonna be what it's gonna weigh. The only difference is they're not taking into consideration all of the tiny little uh, surface mount components and the microprocessors and stuff. Um, but other than that, this is exactly the same. It's just an unpopulated motherboard for an NES Classic Mini, which I absolutely love. I recently also just picked up some unpopulated Game Boy motherboards as well. It's just something that I really find very interesting. It's something that halted in its timeline and never got finished, but then got repurposed for something else, which was to be displayed in a store. I don't really know why they wouldn't just display a retail one in there. Is this potentially a prototype or something? I don't know, uh, I doubt it. I have absolutely no idea really what this would be properly used for, um, but it is a very cool thing to see nonetheless. So inside here, you've got the exposed unplugged in cables, which are gonna be for the controllers, um, and that's because there's nothing on here for them to plug into. But what you have got is the HDMI port and the micro USB port, which is to be able to show on the back of it where the ports would actually be and make it look like it's a real thing and then the buttons here as well they are in their own little enclosure and there's a PCB inside there which I can see but there's no wires connecting it to the motherboard because there obviously doesn't need to be so we should be able to take this out as well let's see and there we go, there's the button PCB. You can see there's some unpopulated solder joints there, um, but that's actually it. This is a cool little thing. I really like it. I really don't know what the application of this is unless it was just to be, I don't know, in a convention before it was finally released um, in some sort of, for maybe for marketing, photographs and all that kind of stuff. I have absolutely no idea. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. But nonetheless, it's a very cool little thing. And for 40 pounds, I'm very, very excited to add it to my collection. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. A very cool little item. I'm hoping to find some more of these things around. Maybe we can try and find a Nintendo Wii or a GameCube or something um, and take them apart and see what's inside because I find that sort of stuff very interesting and hopefully you do as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are and I'll catch you all in the next one. Remember to subscribe and put the little bell notification on, it really helps out the channel a lot. Bye.